just touch briefly on what's going to happen today and uh, express the, or share with you the reality that nothing comes out of a vacuum. That everything that we experience is, kind of, is totally related to things that have gone on before us and it's going to impact the things that are going to come after us. And, that, and that's going to be the first part of the panel that you see today. Is what they're going to talk about is the, the, the essential elements of the different movements that have come together and made possible for what happened here in San Francisco State. Because it did not come out of nowhere. There are so many different incidents that happened, uh, not only in the Bay Area, not only nationally, but internationally. What's really uh, curious about that era, and particularly the year 68, 69, is the amount of activity that was going on globally. It was really, really remarkable. I mean, things were happening around the world that just really seemed to express people's willingness to act and to resist, to demonstrate for what they felt that, that were wrongs and things that they wanted to address. And, and so it's like, a, what, a, what you'll hear in the first segment is there's some reflection on what all of that was about. And, and then subsequently after that, with the vet committee that put together the, uh, uh, this, this series really tried to make it work out so that it was sequential, so that you could have a chance to understand where this thing came from, how it was formed, what happened when it went down, and what the end result of it was. Question? Uh, yeah. yeah. faculty? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Wei Ming Dariotis. I'm a faculty member at a college that you helped found. And um, I actually turned 50 this year, so I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> I work kind of coincided with the birth of the college, and, um, and I've been teaching here for 20 years now. Um, and every time I see this footage, the thing that really strikes me is the physical danger that y'all were in, uh, particularly when you see the guns being pulled out by the police. And I know from my colleague, uh, Lorraine Chu, who spent, what was it, 21 days in jail, that there was a real risk that people were taking with their, with their lives, you know, on a physical level, but also with their lives in the sense of, you know, getting a jail record or being seen, you know, maybe losing their ability to be in school. Um, or like you mentioned, losing their jobs. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what that felt like and what was at stake that made you all feel like you really needed to take this risk. Um, I'm sure that I would uh, welcome any other strikers if they have a comment they'd like to share in response to the question. There's one moment. Uh, I can speak for myself as an African-American woman. Uh, I came to San Francisco State in the 60s. Thank you. I came to San Francisco State in 67, uh, and I looked like I was uh, a chocolate version of the cover of 16 magazine. I had a little flip, pink lipstick, bangs, and, you know, kind of flat back there. <laughs> Intentional. I was doing everything I could to assimilate. When I got to San Francisco State, I saw an environment where it was ripe for me to be me. But I didn't know who he was. And the classes that I was taking were classes that were beginning to help me to see who I was. Those classes were coming from Experimental College. And when I learned that the BSU uh, was beginning to formulate this strategy to fix this problem. Uh, the miseducation of people of a color, the assimilation that would cause us to melt into a model that wasn't ours, uh, why I felt awkward not fitting in all of those years, the time was right. On top of that, we had lost a number of civil rights leaders through assassinations. There was Dr. King, of course, Malcolm X, uh, some of our white colleagues in politics, Robert Kennedy, John Kennedy, uh, we had lost all of these young girls in the church, uh, and the two Jewish men who were there to help support. Uh, we just saw a conflagration of energy that was about to come to a halt. 
uh, particularly with the assassination of Medgar Evers. And so what we really wanted to do was pick up the baton of civil rights, activism, before it came to an end. We saw the backlash taking effect, and we decided it was time for us to do something. For me, the fact that I found a home where I could be me, it was worth fighting for. Nesmith Crutchfield was the other uh, speaker as a student before Roger, so here he is, Nesmith Crutchfield. The question was, Elizabeth, how, how we were able or not afraid to face the dangers that were presented in front of us with the police and whatever. Okay, that, there was another question here that I saw. Oh, that was Karen. Huh? Karen had another question. Okay. So, so um, my question uh, to the students is, we lived through that experience, but it's 50 years later. And I'm really curious yep. what your feeling is when you see this. Does it seem surreal? Does it seem like that's pretty crazy what was happening on this campus? 20-year-old, 18-year-old students were having guns focused at them. That's pretty, I mean, I really want to hear, you're in school now, what do you think about that? Just popcorn, stand up and tell me. I mean, I'm, I'm a teacher, I really want to know how uh, you're experiencing this movie, this film. I'll make a comment. Oh, uh, she, she has the mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hi. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I instantly kind of felt my heart clenched because I see this campus every day. Um, I also teach young students ethnic studies. Um, I've taught in fourth and fifth grade, and now I'm teaching in high school. Um, and to think about, I, I kind of thought about my students and thinking about their bodies being there um, and seeing buildings that I walk into every week to learn how to, I guess, really make a change in my community. Um, it reminded me how much history is, I mean, not only in the quad, but just in the whole campus. Um, it was kind of like a, I felt like liquid nitrogen had been like poured into my body. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my mom was a student at SF State during the strikes as well, so it's uh, something that's always been in my home. But when I come here, and I, uh, I'm currently attending an Asian Studies course, Asian Cultural Studies, and when I go to class, I feel right at home. I feel that my student body is ready to share their experiences with me. And I've always felt um, that the work you guys did there it makes a great impact on me today because I'm sure, like you mentioned, if you hadn't done that, that the, the courses I take today wouldn't be an option. So I would like to say thank you. And I'd also, if you have time, uh, answer the question of if you feel like the strikes and the effort you did really, is this the payout that you were hoping for? That's the this is the pity of the Good morning. Uh, the question is, uh, is this uh, is, uh, the current School of Ethnic Studies and environs um, what we are working for? And um, <clears throat> I think that the way, best way for me to answer that is to say that um, I'm a father of four and I'm a grandfather of four. And you know, your, your, your children and your grandchildren never turn out to be exactly as you want them to be. <laughs> but on the other hand, I feel incredibly blessed to have healthy, brilliant children and grandchildren. And they have to live their own lives uh, as they see fit. Do you get my point? My point is, is that no, uh, see we, we tried to establish a school of third world studies 
and a third world studies department. We had no intention of establishing a school of ethnic studies. I'm just, I'm just being really frank with you. But what we have is an embryo of what can start germinating even after 50 years into growth uh, and into uh, a situation that is incredibly important in reference to what's going on in our nation, both nationally, internationally, and locally today. Um, so we're glad to be here. We are incredibly glad that there is a School of Ethnic Studies. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot to be learned. Um, and we're glad that we lived to help birth this child. Just to, just to back that up, I'm going to go back to um, one of the origins of um, the strike, and that had to do with this campus's relationship with, its, with the communities, not only in terms of this campus, but also education. And when you think about the resources that are available on any campus in regards to the numbers that are there, whether they're students or faculty or administrators, there's an incredible potential to review what's going on in the communities, that's impacting the communities, and as well as the facility to do the analysis to understand how things can be made different so that the situation in communities are better. So that rather than people being divided, we're able to address questions that nobody seems to want to bring to the fore as far as the public is concerned. That has to do with our well-being, our relationships, has to do with the racism that exists throughout this country, has to do with the poverty that exists throughout this country, has to do with the gender issue that we still don't seem to be able to find our way through. It's an incredible fucking waste of our time together when we have an opportunity to sit down and exchange, challenge, and reflect, and develop directions, actions for us to be able to move forward. This school is that opportunity. We need not ignore it. We need to pay attention to it. We need to address our own selves and what it is that's going to be best for us that we share with others. Because that's what really kept the TWLF together, the Black Student Union together. The experience of racism, the experience of poverty. That experience kept us united because when we sat down and we disagreed, we had something that brought us back to the table. Okay, so just let me finish with one, one more statement and, and, and a request, and that is that we're, we're here to engage you. And one of the questions I'm gonna ask you to ask people as they present to you their information and experience is, okay, you're telling us what you did right. What did you do wrong? What were the mistakes that we made? I want to hear those kind of questions and I want them to be pointed to the things that you hear said. Thank you. Um, okay, I want to say one thing. We thought this program out very strategically and I know many of you have classes afterwards so you might be gone for the entire day. But specifically to the question that was asked by that young man, I think if you have time today, between four and seven, we're gonna have a session that is about lessons learned and how we're gonna like to pass it on to you all for now and in the future. I encourage you to come back. And of course, during the whole session, every session is a match to the class schedule. So, you know, one session now is just to incite your interest for you to come back and also to do what Roger does, is ask us the questions we want to hear from you. That's what this 50th is about. But now we have one more segment of the film, and I do want to show this film and perhaps have a couple of minutes to um, ask a question of persons involved there. So thank you.